Namaste students today we are going to start our new chapter that is p block element before the starting of the chapter it's my humble request from all of you who are watching this video that please take out your pen take out your notebook and start noting all the important points all the exceptions which i am going to tell you this chapter is very very important for board purpose as well as for the competitive exam so without any delay let's get start in this video we'll start group 15 element that is nitrogen family we'll start the nitrogen family first of all we'll talk about the name of this family the elements of group 15 means group 15 elements are known as nitrogens group 15 elements are known as nitrogens and why they are known as nitrogens the word nitrogens was derived from the greek word that is nikomix nikomix which means suffocation nikomix which means suffocation which means suffocation so from the elements of this group some chemicals are made which causes suffocation that's why it is nikomix and they are termed as nikogens so group 15 elements are known as nikogens the word nikogens is derived from nikomix which means suffocation now if i talk about the occurrence the occurrence of group 15 element the occurrence of group 15 element first of all i'll talk about nitrogen first of all i'll talk about nitrogen now in nitrogen the first point is that the nitrogen makes about 78% by volume of the atmosphere the nitrogen forms about 78% by volume of the atmosphere we have we are talking about the occurrence means from where we get the elements of this group first of all we are talking about nitrogen so nitrogen makes about 78% by volume of the atmosphere and it is the 33rd most abundant element of the earth crust most abundant element of the earth crust and mainly occur in the form of nitrates mainly occur in the form of nitrates that is any no3 which is known as child salt factory this is the name of this one any no3 that is child salt factory and kno3 that is indian salt factory salt factory these informations are very useful in your competitive exams so nitrogen forms about 78% by volume of the atmosphere it is the 33rd most abundant element of the earth crust and it mainly occurs in the form of nitrates that is any no3 child salt factory and kno3 indian salt factory so this is the occurrence of nitrogen now we'll talk about the second member of this family that is phosphorus now we'll talk about the second member of this family that is phosphorus if we talk about phosphorus phosphorus is the 11th most abundant element of the earth crust 11th most abundant element of the earth crust and mainly occur in the minerals mainly occur in the minerals of apatite family phosphorus mainly occur in the minerals of minerals of apatite family apatite family having general formula what is the general formula of this apatite family that is 3 ca3 po4 whole twice dot cax2 where x may be cl f and oh clear so phosphorus is the 11th most abundant element and it is mainly occur in the minerals of apatite family having general formula 3ca3po4 whole twice 
dot CaH2 where X may be chlorine, fluorine and OH. Means we have to replace X by chlorine, fluorine, OH and rest of the formula remains same and we have three compound. If we have Cl at X it becomes chloroapatite. If F, then it becomes chloroapatite, and if OH, then it becomes hydroxyapatite. And this mineral, this mineral means it is mainly occur in the minerals of apatite family, and this mineral forms the phosphate rocks. This mineral forms phosphate rocks, and these phosphate rocks are mainly present in North Africa, North Africa. North America and Rajasthan of India. Rajasthan of India. So, phosphorus is the 11th most abundant element. It is mainly occur in the minerals of apatite family and this mineral forms the phosphate rocks which are mainly occur in North Africa, North America and Rajasthan of India. In our bones and teeth also we get phosphorus, means phosphorus is also present, phosphorus uh, also form some part of our teeth and bone. So in teeth and bone, in our teeth and bone we also contain phosphorus as, a, as an element. So this is the occurrence of the phosphorus. Now we will move to our next topic, now, now we will move to our next element that is arsenic, antimony and bismuth. Now arsenic, antimony and bismuth are found in traces. Arsenic, antimony and bismuth, these are found in traces in the form of sulfides. In the form of sulfides. These are found in traces in the form of sulfides. The sulfide of arsenic is ASS. ASSS3, sorry, ASFES3, which is named as arsenopyrite, which is known as arsenopyrite. The sulfide of SB is SB2S3, which is known as stibonite, stibonite. And the sulfide of bismuth is Bi2S3, which is known as bismuth glands which is known as bismuth glands. So, nitrogen forms 78% of by volume of the atmosphere, 33rd most el abundant element and occur mainly in the form of nitrate. If we talk about phosphorus, so phosphorus is the 11th most abundant element, mainly occur in the minerals of apatite family. Then uh, this mineral forms phosphate rocks which are present in North America, uh, America North Africa and uh, Rajasthan of India and uh, in our bones and teeth also we get phosphorus as a constituent. If we talk about the rest of the members of the family arsenic, antimony and bismuth, these are present in traces and in the form of sulfides and the, here are the sulfide formula of arsenic, antimony and bismuth. ASFE, ASFES, this is arsenopyrite, SB2S3, this is stibonite, and Bi2S3, that is bismuth glands. So this is the occurrence of the elements of group 15. Now we'll talk about the electronic configuration of group 15 elements. We will talk about the electronic configuration of group 15 elements. Now, first member is nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, antimony and bismuth. And if we talk about the atomic number of these elements, it is 7, 15, 33, 51 and 83. Now, if we arrange the electrons in electronic configuration, what we get? We get helium 2s2, 2p3, neon 3s2, 3p3, argon 3d10, 4s2, 4p3, 
देन आर्गन फिफ्टीन फाइव फोर डी टेन फाइव एस टू फाइव पी थ्री एन एन बिस्मत जिनोन फोर एफ फोर्टीन फाइव डी टेन सिक्स एस टू सिक्स पी थ्री सो दिस इज द इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कॉन्फिग्रेशन ऑफ द मेंबर्स ऑफ ग्रुप फिफ्टीन मीन्स निकोजेंस nitrogen phosphorus arsenic antimony bismuth and this is the electronic configuration of this nitrogen p3 phosphorus p3 arsenic p3 stibonite uh, bismuth p3 and uh, sorry antimony uh, p3 and bismuth also p3 so this is the electronic configuration of this family now now we will talk about the physical properties of this family i hope you all are noting down the important points which i am telling here now physical properties physical properties in physical properties we will deal about the atomic properties also like atomic number atomic mass covalent radii ionic radii first of all we will take atomic number atomic mass covalent radii and ionic radii now if we talk about these four while moving from nitrogen to phosphorus phosphorus to arsenic arsenic to antimony and antimony to bismuth means while moving from nitrogen to bismuth if we talk about any of the property it goes on increasing means if we talk about atomic number atomic number increases down the group atomic mass increases down the group covalent radii due to the increase in the number of shells also increases down the group and if covalent radii increases down the group then ionic radii also increases down the group so these four properties increases on moving down the group from nitrogen to bismuth now next if i talk about ionization enthalpy so we know that what is ionization enthalpy ionization enthalpy is the amount of the energy required is the amount of the energy required to remove the electron from the outermost shell it means as we move down the group covalent radii increases so the distance of the outermost electron from the nucleus increases and if the distance of the outermost electron from the nucleus increases then less amount of energy is required to remove the electron so as we move down the group ionization enthalpy decreases means as we move down the group ionization enthalpy decreases but if we talk about second ionization enthalpy and third ionization enthalpy if i talk about second ionization enthalpy and third ionization enthalpy the second and third ionization enthalpy of bismuth is greater than that of antimony is bismuth is greater than that of antimony this is exception this one is exception this one is exception clear if we talk about first ionization enthalpy if in the question it is given that arrange first ionization enthalpy so first ionization enthalpy decreases down the group as we move from nitrogen to bismuth but if we talk about the second ionization enthalpy and third ionization enthalpy then the second ionization and third ionization enthalpy of bismuth is greater than that of the antimony honi kya jaye thi smaller but it is greater than that of the antimony this is first exception now third if we talk about melting point third if we talk about melting point now melting point increases up to arsenic up to arsenic and then decreases and then decreases means nitrogen phosphorus arsenic melting point increases but after arsenic antimony bismuth melting point decreases now what is the reason behind this the reason behind this is inert pair effect inert pair effect 
Now, what is inert pair effect? Inert pair effect we have studied in 11th class that it is the inability of the S electron to participate in bond formation. Inability of S electron to participate in bond formation is known as inert pair effect. Now, in electronic configuration, we saw that we have outermost p uh, orbital and the inner one s orbital means total we have five electron in the outermost shell it means five electron will participate in bond formation but as we move down the group as we move down the group due to inert pair effect the tendency of five electron to participate in bond formation decreases due to the inability of the two electrons which are present in s orbital so Due to inability, what is our uh, electronic configuration that is S2P3 means we have five electrons which participate in bond formation. More number of bonds, more the symmetrical compound and more is the melting point. Now in nitrogen, we have only three electron in the outermost shell. So it give only three, it form only three bond or maximum four bond. But other element can form five bonds. Other element can form five bonds or six bond. But tendency to form five bond decreases down the group due to inert pair effect. And due to this decrease, uh, due to this decrease in the tendency to form five bond, uh, melting point also decreases down the group. So as we move from nitrogen to arsenic, tendency to form five bond increases, therefore melting point increases. And if we move from arsenic to antimony, then tendency to form five bond decreases as a result of which melting point also decreases. Now next point, if I talk about boiling point, boiling point and density. So the boiling point and density of the elements of group 15 increases on moving down the group. Boiling point as well as density increases as we move from nitrogen to antimony. Melting point increases up to arsenic but then decreases but boiling point and density increases down the group. And if we talk about allotropy means tendency to form allotropes so except nitrogen and bismuth except nitrogen and bismuth all other elements of this group exhibit the allotropic property means they have their allotrope phosphorus has three allotropes red black and white whereas arsenic and antimony has two allotropes gray and yellow phosphorus has three allotropes red white and black Whereas arsenic and antimony have two allotropes that is gray and yellow. So these are the physical properties of nitrogen family or of nicogens. Now we will study the chemical properties of this family. Study the chemical properties of the elements of group 15. In chemical properties of group 15 element, first of all, we will study about the oxidation state. First of all, we will study about the oxidation state. Now, this topic we will study in four different uh, in four different subtopics. Means this topic we will study in four different subtopics, and those four subtopics are negative oxidation state positive oxidation state, covalency and disproportionation. It means in oxidation state, we will take four different topics, negative oxidation state, positive oxidation state, covalency and disproportionation. disproportionation. Now, first of all, we will talk about negative oxidation state. Negative oxidation state. Now, the elements of this group shows a general negative oxidation state of minus 3. The elements of this group shows a general negative oxidation state of minus 3. But if we talk about in real, nitrogen, only nitrogen, only nitrogen with highly electropositive element will for, uh, will show an oxidation state of minus 3 in the form of nitrites. 
in the form of nitrides because in nitrides the nitrogen is present in n3 negative form but if we talk about the other elements other element shows an formal oxidation state of minus 3 other element shows formal oxidation state of minus 3 now what does this mean this mean that nitrogen because of its small size it reacts with highly electro positive element and it gain 3 electron and get converted into n 3 negative and thus show the actual minus 3 oxidation state but the other elements due to their larger size they will not able to gain 3 electrons and not able to show the actual 3 negative oxidation state they will show the ox negative oxidation state in the compound mean it means in compound they will show the negative 3 oxidation state but in real they are not present in minus 3 anionic form so nitrogen only nitrogen with the electro positive element will form will show an oxidation state of minus 3 in the form of nitrides while as rest of the elements of this family shows an formal oxidation state of minus 3 now this is the general negative oxidation state along with minus 3 oxidation state nitrogen also show nitrogen also shows minus 2 oxidation state in hydrazine having formula nh2 nh2 this compound name is hydrazine and minus 1 oxidation state in nh2oh and the name of this formula is hydroxyl amine hydroxyl amine so minus 2 oxidation state in nh2nh2 that is hydrazine and minus 1 in nh2oh that is hydroxyl amine now minus 2 oxidation state was also shown by phosphorus phosphorus in diphosphine phosphine having formula p2h4 and tendency to form or tendency to show minus 3 oxidation state decreases as we move from nitrogen to this one this decrease clear so this is our first sub topic that is negative oxidation state general negative oxidation state is minus 3 only nitrogen with highly electro positive element shows an oxidation state of minus 3 in the compounds known as nitrides whereas rest of the element shows a uh, a formal oxidation state of minus 3 along with minus 3 oxidation state nitrogen also shows minus 2 and minus 1 oxidation state in nh2 nh2 and nh2 oh and along with the nitrogen phosphorus also shows a minus 2 oxidation state in diphosphine having formula p2h4 and if we talk about the stability of the minus 3 oxidation state up to from nitrogen to bismuth it decreases now we'll talk about the positive oxidation state now we'll talk about the second sub topic of this topic that is positive oxidation state positive oxidation state now the general positive oxidation state shown by the elements of group 15 are plus 3 and plus five these are two common positive oxidation state which are shown by the elements of group 50 if i talk about the plus 5 oxidation state compounds if i talk about the plus 5 oxidation state compounds all the compounds of this family in which the oxidation state of the element is plus 5 they are covalent in nature they are covalent in nature it is compulsory clear all the compounds of this family in which the elements are present in plus 5 oxidation state all the compounds are dominantly covalent in nature they are not ionic in nature 
and due to inert pair effect the stability of plus 5 oxidation state decreases down the group and if we talk about bismuth in bismuth only bif5 is the stable compound only bif5 is the stable known compound of bismuth in which the oxidation state of bismuth is plus 5 so if i talk about plus 5 oxidation state compounds they are covalent in nature and as move down the group due to inert pair effect their uh, stability decreases and in bismuth we have only one compound we have only one compound of the bismuth which is stable and that compound is bif5 and that compound is bif5 now if i talk about plus 3 oxidation state compound in plus 3 oxidation state compound if i talk about bif3 and sbf3 bif3 and sbf3 these compounds are ionic in nature these compounds are ionic in nature whereas rest of the compounds are covalent in nature these two compounds are ionic in nature whereas rest of the compounds are covalent in nature but in plus 5 all the compounds are covalent in nature In plus three, BiF three and SbF three are ionic in nature, whereas rest of the compounds are covalent in nature. It means in plus three compound covalent character. In plus three compound covalent character, covalent character decreases. BiF three and SbF three they are ionic in nature, whereas rest are covalent in nature it means covalent character decreases down the group decreases down the group so this is about the positive oxidation state now we'll study the third sub topic of this topic that is covalency that is covalency third one is covalency now if we talk about the covalency if we talk about the covalency then nitrogen can extend its covalency maximum up to plus 4 maximum up to plus 4 whereas all the other members of this family can extend their covalency up to plus 5 or plus 6 covalency means tendency to form the number of the covalent bonds so nitrogen can form maximum four covalent bonds with other elements whereas the other elements of this group can form maximum five or six bonds with the other element so nitrogen can extend its covalency maximum up to four whereas other members can extend its covalency from uh, maximum up to five or six now the fourth one that is disproportional disproportionation now what do you mean by disproportionation reaction disproportionation reaction are those reaction in which a compound itself undergoes oxidation as well as the reduction means only one compound will undergo oxidation as well as the reduction then the reaction is termed as disproportionation reaction all the all the members all the uh, compounds of the nitrogen having oxidation state from plus 1 to plus 4 all the compounds of nitrogen having oxidation state from plus 1 to plus 4 undergoes disproportionation reaction in acidic medium in acidic medium clear all the nitrogen compounds having oxidation state from plus 1 to plus 4 undergoes disproportionation reaction in acidic medium let us take one example hno3 on heating gives hno2 Plus NO plus H2O. HNO3 on heating gives HNO2 plus NO plus H2. Now in HNO3, if I calculate the oxidation state of nitrogen, then it becomes one plus X minus six is equal to zero 
So x equals to plus 5. The oxidation state of nitrogen is plus 5. Here 1 plus x minus 4. So x equals to plus 3. Oxidation state is plus 3. Here the oxidation state of plus 3. And if I talk about here, if I talk about here, then here it is 1, my, uh, sorry, x minus 2. So x equals to plus 2. Here it is plus 3 and here it is plus 2. HNO, sorry, HNO2 gives HNO3 plus NO. This is the formula. Here it is plus 3. Here it is plus 5 and here it is plus 2. Now when we move from plus 3 to plus 5 means there is oxidation. And when we move from plus 3 to plus 2, means here it is reduction. So, HNO2 undergoes reduction as well as oxidation. Undergoes reduction as well as oxidation. So, this is a disproportionation reaction. So, what is disproportionation reaction? A reaction in which a substance undergoes oxidation as well as reduction. All the elements of nitrogen having oxidation state from plus 1 to plus 4 undergoes disproportionation reaction. And here is one example in which plus 3 oxidation state get converted into plus 5 as well as plus 2. Now we will take one more example. We will take one more example. And what is that example? H3PO3. Now, if we calculate the oxidation state in this, it is 3 plus x minus 6 is equal to 0. So, x equals to plus 3. H3PO3 on heating gives H3PO4 plus TH3. Here it is 3 plus x minus 8. So, 8 uh, x becomes plus 5 and here it is x plus 3 equals to 0. So, x equals to minus 3. So, plus 3 to plus 5 means oxidation and plus 3 to minus 3 means reduction. Means we have only one compound and it undergoes reduction as well as oxidation. So, this is also a disproportionation reaction. In previous reaction, we have studied that HNO3, HNO2 on heating gives HNO3 plus NO plus H2O. In this, the oxidation state of nitrogen is plus 3. In this, the oxidation state of phosphorus is plus 3. Means the compounds in which the elements oxidation state is plus 3, they undergo ox uh, disproportionation reaction. But if we talk about the disproportionation reaction order in down the group, due to the increase in the stability of plus 3 oxidation state, the disproportionation reaction decreases down the group. If we talk about a specific plus 3 oxidation state, so due to the increase in the stability of plus 3 oxidation state down the group, the tendency to undergo disproportionation reaction decreases. Means if I talk about H3ASO3 or H3SBO3, then in these cases, the tendency to undergo disproportionation reaction is less as compared to H3PO3. Why? Because in these, the tendency to show plus 3 oxidation state increases. The stability of plus 3 oxidation state increases. So, in this way, we'll study the oxidation state of nitrogen family. So, Whatever information I have given you, I hope you have noted down because these informations are highly useful for you. The second chemical properties of group 15 element that is reactivity towards hydrogen. Now, the elements of group 15, they react with hydrogen to form volatile trihalides trihydrides, volatile trihydrides of formula EH3, of formula EH3, NH3 is ammonia, NH3 we all know that it is ammonia, PH3 is phosphine, 
PS3 is phosphine. Then ASH3 is RC. RC. SVH3 is stibine. Stibine. And BIH3 is bismuthine. Bismuthine. So, the elements of group 15, they react with hydrogen to form volatile. Means, those uh, compounds have the tendency to form vapors. Volatile trihydrides of formula EH3 and these are the names of those trihydrides. Now, if I talk about the preparation of these trihydrides, these trihydrides are prepared by using two methods. First one, by reacting by reacting corresponding by reacting corresponding corresponding binary compounds corresponding binary metal compounds metal compounds with water or dilute acid so first method what is the first method of preparing these volatile trihalides that is by reacting their corresponding metal compounds, corresponding binary compounds with H2O or dilute acid. For example, CA3P2. This is the metal compound of phosphorus and binary because only two elements are there. It reacts with HCl to form CaCl2 plus PH3. It forms CaCl2 plus PH3. Similarly, Mg3N2, it reacts with H2O to form MgOH whole twice plus NH3. So, whenever the corresponding means phosphorus metal compound reacts with HCl to form phosphine, nitrogen metal compound reacts with water to form ammonia. So, by reacting the corresponding means, corresponding means that particular element. Reacting corresponding binary metal compounds with H2O or acid, we can able to prepare the volatile hydrides. Now, we'll, we'll study the second, the second uh, method for preparing these volatile trihydrides. That is by reduction of, by reduction of trichlorides by reduction of their trichlorides with with Zn oblique HCl or LiAlH4 by using these two reducing agent we can prepare the trihydrides from trichlorides but here one exception is there which you have to learn and that exception is BiCl3 so the reduction of trihydride by reduction of trihydrides, uh, trichlorides except BiCl3, we can able to make trihydrides. For example, ECl3, it reacts with LiAlH4, it gives EH3 plus LiCl plus AlH3, where E represent nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic and antimony. Except bismuth, this reaction is for all the elements. Means E is nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic and antimony. So, with the help of these two methods, we can able to prepare these volatile trihydrides. Now, we'll move to the structure of these trihydrides. We'll move to the structure of these trihydrides. Now, I'll take... Example of NH3. We all studied the structure of NH3 in our 11th class that in NH3 the nitrogen is sp3 hybridized and it forms three bond with hydrogen whereas one lone pair as a result of which the shape becomes pyramidal. Clear? And the hybridization is sp3. 
The hybridization is sp3. Similarly, if I talk about ph3, ash3, bih3, and sbh3, in all these hybrids, the central atom exhibit sp3 hybridization, and the shape is pyramidal. But if I talk about the bond angle, if I talk about the bond angle, bond angle decreases. The bond angle decreases as we move from nih3 to bih3. Bond angle. The bond angle decreases as we move from NIH and NH3 to BIH3. Now, the reason behind this is as we move from NH3 to BIH3, size of central atom, size of central atom increases and electronegativity decreases. What is electronegativity? Electronegativity is the tendency to attract the shared pair of electron towards itself. So as we move down the group, size of the central atom increases and electronegativity decreases as a result of which the electron of the bond pair move far away from the central atom. When the electron of the bond pair move far away from the central atom, so the electron density around the central atom decreases and the bond pair will come close to each other as a result of which bond angle decreases. So, as we move from nitrogen to bismuth, size of the central atom increases and electronegativity decreases. Due to these two factors, electron will move away from the central atom as a result of which the electron density around the central atom decreases and bond angle also decreases because bond, uh, uh, bond comes close to each other. So, in this way, we can say that all the volatile trihydrides have sp3 hybridization, pyramidal shape, and the bond angle decreases from NH3 to BIH3. Now, we'll move to the properties of the trihydrides. The properties of the trihydrides. Now, first property we'll discuss that is boiling point. Now, if we talk about the boiling point due to hydrogen bonding, due to hydrogen bonding, the boiling point of NH3, the boiling point of ammonia is greater than that of pH3 and ASH3. But in case of SBH3 and BIH3, the increase in Van der Waal force of attraction compensates the increase in the boiling point due to hydrogen bonding as a result of which their boiling point is greater than that of NH3. It means boiling point of NH3 is greater than that of pH3 and ASH3. The reason behind this is hydrogen bonding but the boiling point of SBH3 and BIH3 is greater than that of NH3 and the reason behind this is increase Wonder Wall, Wonder Wall force of attraction. Wonder Wall force of attraction. As a result of which, if we have to arrange the different hydrides in increasing order of the boiling point, then the order becomes pH3, ASH3. Due to hydrogen bonding, the boiling point of ammonia is greater than these two. But due to increase in the Van der Waal force of attraction, the, the boiling point of SBH3 and BIH3 is greater than that of the ammonia. So why this is due to this and this one is due to the second factor. Now if I talk about the second point that is melting point. Second property is melting point. Due to hydrogen bonding, the melting point of ammonia is greater from the other hydrides due to hydrogen bonding. Due to hydrogen bonding, the melting point of ammonia is greater than the other hydrides. So, the sequence, so the order becomes pH3, ASH3, SBH3 and NH3. The melting point of ammonia is greater than the rest of the members of this element, rest of the hybride members of this element. Now we we'll move to our third property that is thermal stability. Third property is thermal stability. Now as we move down the group due to the increase in the 
size bond length also increases due to the increase in the size of the central atom the length between the atom and the hydrogen increases due to the increase in the bond length bond strength decreases and due to the decrease in the bond strength thermal stability also decreases so thermal stability decreases down the group thermal stability decreases down the group why thermal stability decreases down the group because due uh, on moving down the group uh, size of the central atom increases due to the increase in the size of the central atom the distance of the central atom the distance between the central atom and the hydrogen increases as a result of which bond strength decreases and thermal stability also decreases so the order is most stable nh3 then ph3 then ash3 then sbh3 and then bis3 and if i talk about bis3 it is so unstable that its half life period its half life period is only 20 minute this is so much unstable so on moving down the group the stability decreases and bis3 is so unstable that its half life period is only 20 minute now next we will talk about the reducing character next we will talk about the reducing character now what do you mean by reducing character reducing character is the tendency to reduce other element and these hydrides can reduce other element by giving the hydrogen so as uh, as as easily they uh, release hydrogen from their hydrides they are strong reducing agent on moving down the group thermal stability decreases because of the decrease in the thermal stability it becomes easy for the hydrides to release the hydrogen so they will remove the they will release the hydrogen easily as a result of which on moving down the group their reducing character increases so on moving down the group thermal stability decreases and reducing character increases so the order of sequences nh3 is the least reducing agent ph3 ash3 sbh3 and bih3 but if we talk about nh3 NH3 is also a good reducing agent but at high temperature NH3 also behave as a good reducing agent but at high temperature at high temperature it reduce CuO to Cu and itself get converted into N2 plus H2O so this reaction is possible at high temperature so NH3 also behave as a good reducing agent but at high temperature so third is thermal stability fourth is reducing character now fifth we'll talk about the basic character fifth we'll talk about the basic character of these hydrides basic character of these hydrides now these acts as lewis base why these acts as lewis base by donating the lone pair of electron they all have a lone pair of electron so by donating that electron they can behave as a lewis base but as we move down the group the size of the central atom increases due to the increase in the size of the central atom the cloud the electron density cloud over that central atom decreases as a result of which it becomes difficult for that central atom to donate the electron as we move down the group size of the central atom increases due to the increase in the size of the central atom the cloud of electron density the electron density cloud decreases and it becomes difficult for the central atom to donate the lone pair of electron as a result of which basic character decreases so basic character decreases on moving down the group so our order so the order becomes nh3 ph3 ash3 sbh3 and bih3 
So in this NH3, NH3 is uh, NH3 is more basic as compared to PH3, which is more basic than ASH3, which is more basic than SBH3, and SBH3 is more basic than BIH3. Now, next, if I talk about solubility, now if I talk about solubility, due to hydrogen bonding, due to hydrogen bonding, due to hydrogen bonding, Ammonia is soluble in water, but rest are insoluble in water. So these are the properties of the hydrides of 15th group element. First is melting point. Second is boiling point. Third, we have studied thermal stability. Fourth, reducing character. Fifth, basic character. And sixth, solubility. So students, that's all for today. Yet the chemical property is still not completed. But in our next video, we'll continue the chemical properties of the 15th group element. Till then, learn this video, watch this video again and again and learn all the concepts which I told you 